Hey marketers, Brand Hamill here, and in today's video, what I'm discussing with you is keyword research, and more specifically, how you can get the very most out of the Google Ads Keyword Planner. There's so many different functions and features that people don't know about that can give you, you know, that added edge with your keyword research to really drill down and find those golden nugget keywords that will really make your Google Ad campaign pop. But on the other hand, if you screw up your keyword research, you are absolutely screwed two ways from Sundays. There is absolutely no way to fix it other than good keyword research, which can be very costly if you do screw it up from the start. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you not only how to use the Google Ads Keyword Planner properly, but also we're gonna talk about a little bit about you know what makes a good keyword and what makes a bad keyword. On that note, this video is actually part of a Google playlist of mine on my channel regarding keyword research, where I talk about the psychology of keywords, more specifically, you know, what makes a good keyword, what makes a bad keyword, how you can select them, what categories they fall into, and how you can structure your accounts in and around keywords. Also, how to use some paid tools like Ahrefs and so on and so forth. So, you know, that playlist is really, really powerful because, as I've mentioned, you screw up the keywords, you're screwed. It doesn't matter if you're having the world's best tactics, you get the world's best consultant, you get the world's best strategy, you screw up the keywords, you're screwed. It doesn't matter whether it's content or Google Ads being ads, it doesn't matter as I mentioned. It certainly doesn't matter with, with content. You can have the world's greatest content with the world's worst keywords, you won't, you won't do very well. I mean, it's so damn obvious. But if you have average content with great keywords, you'll do okay. You shouldn't do okay, but you know you will because the foundation is, is rock solid. So with that said, without doubt, the best way to find the best and those really powerful golden nugget keywords is to subscribe to my YouTube channel, funny enough. I uh, know I say that in all seriousness because uh, I'm releasing this content, it's purely free of course, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but you will miss out if you don't subscribe on valuable content relating to keyword research and all aspects of Google Ads and Facebook Ads and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, why not subscribe? But with that being said, let's hop over to my computer and we'll get stuck into today's tutorial because, you know, I think it's gonna be really powerful. So here we are at my computer, just in a dummy Google Ads campaign where I run some tests and I've actually spent some money and I've used uh, that, that data where I spent that money in previous videos. But, uh, you know, with that said, to use the Google Ads Keyword Planner, you actually do need to have a Google Ads account. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate, but it is free. So, you know, you do have to set up your billing and stuff, but you don't have to spend any money to use it, which is kind of cool. Uh, but you do need that. So there's a little bit of a, you know, a, a bugger of a hurdle there uh, to, to jump over, but, uh, you know, it's not that big. So, you know, um, if you kind of had a sigh there, you know, suck it up. Suck it up and, uh, you know, start uh, start your little journey with Google Ads. And now to access the Google Ads Planner, all you have to do is whip up to Tools and Settings, and to the far left, we have the Keyword Planner here. And when you come to this page, there's a couple of different aspects that some people just really, I think, uh, have like a bit of banner blindness or they're you know, too eager beaver to uh, have a look at. Now we've got Discover Keywords, and you can pause and read the, the, the definitions of these if you wish. Uh, and we also have get search volume and forecast. You can read the definitions, pause the video. I'm not gonna read them out because uh, that's redundant. Uh, and, but if we scroll down, we have your plans and shared plans. People can share their keyword plans with you, consultants, etc. And you've got your own plan. So you can do your keyword research in phases if you've got multiple products, multiple services, so on and so forth. Plan for each. Uh, you know, you, I'll loosely talk about this further on in the tutorial. And so you can just revert back to these plans and, and uh, you know, get a better understanding of what you're thinking at the time, or you want to refine them, you want to add to them, et cetera, et cetera. So to continue on, we're going to click discover new keywords and we come up with a new page here. Again, there's a whole heap of features here that I think people gloss over and, and don't pay too much attention, which is a real shame because they can you know, give you a little bit more um, clarity and, and, and specificity, uh, which is really, really helpful when the, the ocean of keywords is massive. It's you know, you don't want to be fishing in the Pacific Ocean, you'd rather be fishing in a barrel, you know, f filled with, you know, ideal fish. And, you know, that's not the greatest analogy, but you get the idea. It's a terrible analogy, actually. But anyway, it gets the point across. That's the main thing. Now, what we want to do here is we've got, uh, we've got two functions here and start with keywords or start with the website. I usually run with start with keywords, but I'm still going to talk about start with the website. Now, as we come down a little bit further, what this little search bar here, and what we want to do, what sorry, what we can do here is input ten relevant keywords 
to a specific product or phrase. You don't want to be jumbling keywords together. So if you're a construction company or a contractor, let's say, it doesn't matter what kind of a business you are, I'm just going to use this for the for, throughout the tutorial uh, for no better reason than there's no better reason. And so with that said, let's say that you're a contractor and you do bathrooms and kitchen renovations, remodeling, so on and so forth. You don't want to be putting bathroom and kitchen keyword phrases in here because it just dilutes the specificity of uh, the search query and the analysis from Google. So you don't want that. And you don't want to be combining those in the in the one plan anyway because they're two separate services and you know, talking about structure, uh, you, you know, they, want, they deserve their own campaigns. And not only do they deserve, but uh, strategically and technically, it's far better for, for, for separate services when they're so separate to have their own campaigns. So with this, you can input up to 10 keyword phrases and Google will tell you when you, you have reached the limit, you can't input any more. You can include brand names in the results if you like. I sometimes do or sometimes don't, depends upon the context of the business. And we can obviously change the language here and you know that's self-explanatory, I'm not gonna talk about you through that. But when it comes to locations though, uh, there is some interesting aspects to this in my opinion. So we've got Australia here, if you haven't recognized the accent, I am Australian. Uh, I, doesn't stop me from working with people everywhere, such as uh, Indonesia uh, and New Zealand and some other countries, or obviously other countries, but they're the ones that we can see on this map. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what we can do here is we can remove Australia and we can add uh, state level, doesn't matter if you're in the United States, you can add uh, you can have Florida, Texas, you know, doesn't matter. Now, if you want to add states, you have to be careful because it will just narrow down the pool of data that you have to work with and Google has to work with, which can be a good thing because it's more specific and that's fantastic, but it can be not so good because there's not enough da data to substantiate uh, showing you any data. So if there's not enough data, Google kind of leaves it blank and you, you might think there's no search phrases, which is not true, of course. You can actually get to the city level. Again, you know that becomes more granular, more specific, and we run into those data volume problems that I just spoke about. So you have to be careful with that kind of stuff. But those are the different aspects that you can put. You, and I mean, you can add zip codes, postcodes, uh, and things of that nature. So depending upon you know what the style of business that you have and 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 things like that, play around with the, the location targeting. And you can edit this once we go to the next step and we're actually in the, the keyword you know research interface. Next we have enter a domain to use as a filter. So if we add 10 keywords up here that are, that are pretty relevant, or maybe they're not relevant, it doesn't really matter. This, this uh, domain filter will act as a, as a net and kind of you know, bring in and, and restrict yeah, the, the, the outrageousness of the keyword that could be shown. Uh, again, an interesting way to, to say that, but forgive me, it is uh, quarter to nine on a Friday night and I uh, had to shoot this video now because uh, my schedule's been jam-packed and uh, you know, you you just got to do some things, otherwise they just never get done. So here we are, Friday night for me. Uh, I'm spending the uh, the evening with you. So uh, that probably sounds weird listening to, but uh, yeah, we'll just gloss over that. We'll we'll continue on like that. Nothing nothing weird was ever said. So what I've done and gone ahead with here is added some keyword phrases in to speed up the tutorial just by a few seconds. So we've added some kitchen renovation keyword phrases to run with that theme for no good reason other than well, there's no other good reason. Now, so what we have here is the ability to input keywords. You can put up to 10, as I mentioned. You input one phrase, such as keyword ideas, press enter, and it selects it with that little bubble there. Now, I'm just gonna whip over to Google and have a look at, uh, just had a look at Google here, Kitchen Renovation Sydney, and I'm gonna pick on Impala Kitchens because, I don't know, just a weird name. And uh, I don't know what Impala's had to do with kitchens, but apparently uh, a great deal in Sydney. So we're gonna pick on Impala Kitchens. Uh, I have nothing to do with them. And we've got their website here, and which is kind of cool because it turned out they actually do bathroom renovations as well. So just uh, reiterates the point when I was talking about the planning. So that's kind of funny how you know the world works that way. So we're gonna put Impala Kitchens there, and we're gonna say get results. Now once this page loads, and it's still loading now, but you can add a, 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 a plan name if you wish. I don't do that because I export uh, the data uh, into Excel. I manipulate it the way that I want it. And perhaps I will talk, talk to you about that uh, in a later keyword research video. Uh, but I won't talk about it now because this video is probably gonna be slightly 
long-ish, no, not as long as some of them, but uh, long, long-ish, if that's not a word, but you get the idea. Uh, yeah, so you can add a plan name if you want. Now, when it comes to locations, I spoke about before, you can change the locations. And what I'm gonna do, is we'll just have a quick look here at Kitchen Ideas, 4,400, 22,000, 8,000, Kitchen Remodel, 720. Now, what I'm gonna do is just, we'll just change this uh, and we'll just, we'll go with Sydney because that's where our great friends uh, in parlor are and we'll select target Sydney and it'll change the volumes quite drastically uh, and it also change the keyword, uh, sorry, the, the bid ranges, top of page bid, low range and top of paid bid, high range. That is quite awkward to say. Um, that's a bit of a tongue twister for me. Uh, but uh, moving on, uh, we got uh, we can see that the the average cost per clicks did raise a little bit, I think, across the board uh, because it's more specific uh, and that level of specific, uh, specificity when it becomes uh, geographical based uh, means that you've got the a better a better businesses serving that area that are going to have a better sales cycle because they're they're more specific geographically. Uh, and you need to be geographic for, for that particular service, therefore they can afford to spend a higher amount on those particular keyword phrases, uh, hence the cost per click is higher. But we, we, did, we did see that the, the average search volume drastically dropped because it, it's ge geographically more specific. We'll keep it because we don't need to change it. Now, moving on to language, quite obvious. You just select the language, Russian for Russians, and you know English predominantly for the United States, if you're targeting a, a Spanish area, Spanish. Uh, pretty simple stuff there. When it comes to the search networks, we've got Google and Google search partners. It will change the search volume just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter in my opinion whether you change either one. Uh, I usually test new campaigns with the search partners network unless I have prior experience in that industry and I know the search partner stinks. Uh, I do have a video about search partners as well, uh, allowing you to understand how the search partners work, which is kind of cool. But more importantly, how you can evaluate the search partner network for your campaigns. If it stinks, turn it off. If it works great, fantastic, keep it running. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, that video will just pop around somewhere in this video if you wanna to click to it. Uh, it'll also be in the description below. You can also change the date range, which is kind of cool because you can see some seasonality. So we can see just all available, for instance, and we'll, we'll see some interesting trends here uh, you know, there's, there really is a wave kind of function here, and uh, yeah, for, you know, it's pretty stock standard coming into Christmas. No trades people really want to do much work, people understand that. Uh, you know, they're all on holidays, you know, the, the, the customers themselves are on holidays, so there's not much search volume coming into the middle of the year, coming into the end of the year, quite busy. Everyone wants to impress their friends, uh, you know, saying that they've got a new kitchen, got a new bathroom, renovation, extension, new home, etc. Uh, you know, people are quite busy in the middle of the year with this type of stuff because of those reasons. Want to prepare for Christmas? I don't know. I'm just I'm really making that up, but there might be a little bit of a uh, bit of truth to that. Next, you can download your uh, keyword idea. I do do that. I download the CSV, manipulate it, uh, and you know, tweak it and make it work the way I want it to work. So what I want to do really quickly is just come back here and click on discover new keywords and show you that you can do this with a landing page or a specific page. Now, our friends at Impala Kitchens don't have the greatest URL structure. Uh, it's a bit uh, a bit funny like that, uh, a bit like the name Impala, <laughs> the URL. I shouldn't say that. I should, really shouldn't say that. Uh, but, you know, if you're not having a little bit of a fun, uh, a little bit of fun and a little bit of a joke around in, in this world, you're going to go mad pretty quickly in my opinion. So what we can do here is use the entire site or use this, this specific page. Now, depending upon this, now this, th there's a huge emphasis here that this, uh, this website has, you know, correctly set up the, the, the SEO elements, such as title tags and, and so on and so forth, H1s and, you know, all the on-page elements that go into good SEO correctly in order to, for Google to get a good understanding of what this specific page is about, because it doesn't understand context like you and I do. So with that being said, we'll click, we'll, we will click get results, and we, we just noticed that it, the location did change back to Australia, which is okay. And even though we did select the specific keyword phrase, we still get bathroom related ideas. So that leads me to believe they might have a little bit of SEO issues, but they were ranking on the first page, so you know it can't be all bad. Uh, you know we, we don't want to be too critical. We've already 
well, I'm not saying we, I'm throwing you in here, but I've already bagged the name a little bit. Uh, nothing wrong with the name. But um, yeah, anyway, moving on, I've rambling a little bit there, I do apologize. Uh, so we can see here just a whole bunch of keyword phrases. It's actually quite good uh, in a weird way that they've thrown some bathroom stuff in here because it, it, it'll show you how to use some of these filters. Uh, so yeah, you know, let's just jump into filters with that being said. Now there's a couple here I use quite often. Uh, there's some here that I rarely, if ever, use. One of the most important ones is keyword text. Uh, keyword contains, and we can say, you know, bathroom. We don't, we want to find all the keywords related to bathroom. And it, it, it does that. So kitchen and bathrooms, these are predominantly now, you know, bathroom related keyword phrases. But we're only looking at kitchen based keyword phrases here. So to come back to the filter, we just delete the filter. Uh, we come back in and then we click here and then we say is does not contain and we do not want keyword phrases would not enter there we do not want keyword phrases related to bathrooms now there is one little thing here um, that you might want to pay attention to is that you can add multiple keywords here by adding a comma so another particular you know a keyword phrase that might not be relevant is the word home we can see home improvement just down here so we'll, we'll put in bathroom and home uh, you would go through it and add some uh, more keywords that aren't relevant to the list but for the tutorial I'm just teaching the principles because uh, you know uh, essentially this uh, this keyword research that we're doing here is, is useless um, except for maybe in parlor kitchens <laughs> so you know anyway with that being said, we can exclude any keywords that do not have uh, that do have the the keyword bathroom or home, and we can see here we start to work with uh, some filter uh, some keywords that are much more relevant, but we have still got some irrelevant ones. So you, you can combine filters that with a keyword text filter, and we can just say it has to have kitchen, and you know this should be now pretty damn specific to what we're looking for. So we can start to see here that you know kitchen is probably not relevant, but nonetheless, uh, we've got kitchen design ideas, kitchen design, kitchen remodel, so on and so forth. So we've got a pretty good list to work with, and with 10 seconds of work, you know we've got a pretty good result, and we can start checking these off and and whatnot, and and and, and adding to our plan. We can add them to the plan. We can add ad groups and stuff here. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I actually don't believe in it to be honest. I think this is, is a stupid way to do it uh, because you, you've got limited control at some, uh, to some extent. And what I mean by that is you want to be using uh, an, a, a, a structure that it might be, there's multiple different structures and I talk about multiple different structures in various videos, but you might be using like an alpha beta uh, strategy within the one campaign for instance. Uh, like a well, like a more like a mutant variation of the alpha beta campaign. So what I mean by that, let's just say that uh, you know we're, we're gunning for the keyword phrase kitchen renovation, uh, kitchen design Sydney. Or you know we'll just run with kitchen design Sydney. Now you might want to add that as a phrase match because it's an uber specific and fantastic keyword. I'm not saying it is, but for all intents and purposes, this in tutorial it is. So what we want to do with that is added as a phrase match. Now we want uh, exact match. Now we want to, might want to add it as a phrase match and also modified broad match. And we bid them all differently. Exact match gets the highest bid, phrase gets the middle, modified broad match gets the lowest. That way it gives us a wider a range of, of a net to cast for longer tail, tail, uh, longer tail based keyword phrases. Uh, and, and we can refine our Google Ads campaign as we get more data uh, you know, further along. That's one of the main reasons why I like to export to CSV and build and build them in the Google Ads editor because I can structure my campaigns the way that I know that they work far better as opposed to what the damn Google reps say who are the absolute worst, worst, worst people when it comes to Google Ads I've ever seen. They stink. They really just stink and they just rub everyone the wrong way. Uh, and if you want to waste some time, head, head over to Reddit. There's a subreddit PPC. Just type in Google Rep and you'll see some just wicked stories. They're, they're good people, but they're just hopeless at their job. So there's other filters as well, and we can just remove these filters. Uh, the exclude adult ideas is done by default. Um, it's not often that you will need to have a look at adult keyword phrases. Uh, I've, weirdly enough, done some work in the adult world, not as an actor, I can assure you of that. Uh, but yeah, consulting, I really should have said that up front, but nonetheless. Uh, so what we can see here, we, there's our other filters as I was talking about. Uh, average search, uh, average monthly searches. So you can, 
uh, greater than or equal to, uh, lower than or equal to, and you can just say, I want to look at keywords, you know, that have uh, higher than or equal to 500 searches per month, and it'll start to give you a list. And you know, you can skin that cat how that applies to, to your business. When it comes to competition, it's just low, high, uh, and, and medium. And you know, that, that one's kind of uh, obvious. When it comes to ad impression share, you can start to look at the ad impression share you'll have as opposed to your plans cost per click. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a few moments time. You can set parameters around the top of page bid, low range and high range. So you can start to find keyword phrases that work within your forecasts. Uh, and I'll talk about forecasts in a moment where you can you know, set up uh, you know, little simulations in relation to you know, how effective your Google Ads campaigns might be. I say might with, a, with, with, a, with quotation marks because you don't know until you get in and have a look. Uh, exclude the keywords that you have in previous plans, etc. You can link this up to your Google Search Console and have a look at average positions and search uh, organic impression share, etc. Uh, if you do have this link to your Search Console, which I do recommend, it is, uh, it is quite interesting. And then you just come over to columns like I did just then. And then we can select uh, you know, some columns that are related to uh, the Search Console, such as uh, these three, Competition Index, uh, and then we've got uh, organic impression share and organic average position. So you can add those columns into this uh, into this sheet. Now at the top left hand corner here, we've got grouped ideas and it'll start to group them into themes, which is kind of cool uh, in some ways and kind of stinks in some other ways because they're not that good at it in my opinion. You can make these columns uh, uh, wider and, and, and stuff like that, which is, which is cool because some of these are quite uh, long. In, in their uh, in their in their length, so uh, yeah, we can we can click down here. I don't I get into this a little bit more with with the content based research as opposed to the Google Ads keyword research because uh, I like to really you know have close close control over the keywords that I'm selecting within my Google Ads campaign because uh, you know you want you want to be a dictator when it comes to that. Now, if you click this little tab here, plan overview, it brings you to this page, and we can start to add keyword ideas here. And we'll just start, we've got to add keyword ideas first. Sorry, I should have done that before. But we're on with bathrooms here because bathroom designs, bathroom model, uh, and, and that'll do. Now we have to add these to an existing plan, add to plan. So I just added those keywords there by just selecting them. I select just, uh, just selecting those three and then just adding them to the bathroom ad group. I would never structure a campaign this way. It's purely done for this tutorial. Selected the phrase match. Uh, keyword match type, which is okay, I suppose. Now what we want to do is head over to the forecast area by uh, pressing the plan overview. Okay, so we've come to the, the forecasting area and I've just narrowed down the location targeting, removed Australia and added Sydney to get more relevant data uh, because Australia, well, it's just not relevant to the forecasting. Uh, and you want to be, you want to make this forecast relevant to your geographic area. Otherwise, you know, you're going to get some weird, weird numbers. So we can say here just based upon you know different parameters and we can change the parameters of course uh, you know we've got we can change our you know our cost per click and it'll give you a bubble here uh, of how many clicks you could roughly get uh, and you know that's kind of uh, interesting you can play around with that using you know the the data that was shown in the previous keyword research phrase when we're talking about top of page bid low and high range so you can change that around how you wish, and we'll just keep it at $4 for the sake of this. We can actually add conversion-based uh, uh, stuff here, which is really, really cool. So we can say that we have an average conversion rate of 5%, uh, and we have an average transactional value, let's say the bathroom for uh, kitchens for, uh, we're using bathrooms here, but we'll say that the average bathroom is 15,000 in revenue. We'll click save, and that drastically starts to have a look, a drastic effect on our on our conversion. So now we're saying we're getting six conversion, a cost per conversion of $50. Uh, the ROAS is probably just too large to calculate, uh, but uh, that's funny. I, I haven't seen that before because I don't use it that too much, but that is a little bit funny. Uh, but if you, if, you know, it's, it is realistic. I mean, it, it actually is realistic to be fair. Um, realistic doesn't mean it's going to happen. I would suspect that the cost per click is, is probably a little bit more than this. Uh, but nonetheless, even if that ROAS, uh, sorry, that, that, that CPA is $100, uh, Google's probably still not gonna calculate that ROAS. 
but they, they're going to get you know six leads for roughly let's say uh, three hundred dollars probably with their sales uh their sales uh skills and and processes they, they probably get one uh job out of that one in six uh one in one in four to one in six is, is usually typical for that for that sold business so they're getting a deal let's say a new bathroom fifteen thousand revenue for 280 bucks no brainer in my opinion uh so you know I say that with, uh, it's interesting to see numbers because numbers start to paint a picture of what could happen, but it doesn't say this will happen. The cost per click could be drastically higher once you get into the market. Uh, the volume could be substantially higher or lower. Uh, your conversion rate from Google Ads, if your ads stink, or if your keyword research stinks, uh, you're going to have a, a blowout or maybe no conversions at all. On the other hand, you could set up everything you know, rather well and you, your, your conversion rate could be well and truly toward 10%, uh, 7 8%, 9%. I've seen them around that, in that industry. Uh, or I've got clients that are in that industry with, the, with those conversion rates. So that all has drastic effect. So guys, there you have it. That's how you can use and get the most out of the Google Ads Keyword Planner. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there are going to be more tutorials coming along the lines of keyword research. As I spoke about the psychology, of keyword research, uh, the paid tools and how to get the most from Ahrefs and so on and so forth, SEMrush, things of that nature. How you know how to structure your keyword phrases for uh, your, your Google Ad campaigns or Bing campaigns, so on and so forth. So really powerful stuff in my opinion. Don't forget to smash that like button for this video. It really does help me within that YouTube algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to sub click subscribe. The content's free, as you've seen. I'm not trying to you know flog you or anything. There's no you know you butte uh, you know, glorious guru course that I'm, you know, selling you for 1997 or, you know, 2997, like everyone else does just uh, free, good content. Don't forget to drop a comment down below. If you've got any feedback or you want tutorials on any specific topic related to keyword research or anything other digital marketing wise. And like always, if you want to have a, a chat with me, there's no obligation. There's no sales BS. You probably get the feel that I'm not real salesy, but a whole bunch of people that reach out to me, have a great conversation for sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes 60 minutes. Uh, I can review their Google ads, uh, review, review their Facebook campaigns, their email automation sequences, and so much more. Provide just really you know, hard hitting feedback uh, in practical ways of how you can improve and scale your marketing. There's no obligation. Uh, people ask, why do I do these YouTube videos? I actually do enjoy them. I, I really do enjoy the conversations I have with people when they reach out. Uh, and, and some people decide to work with me. And that's great when that happens and it's great when it doesn't happen. I don't force that upon anyone because uh, you know, digital marketing is like marriage. You're, you're, you're stuck once you start in a way. Because when it's done well, it, it does work very well. So uh, you, you work with people for a long time, a bit like marriage. So uh, you, know, you want to work with people that you know, want to work with, with you. Um, you know, it's a long-winded explanation, but you know, if people want to work or entertain the idea of working with me, I'll let them bring it up and, and uh, we chat about that. So that's not the essence of this channel, but uh, the, the great conversations I really do enjoy. I have half a dozen, sometimes a little bit more than that per week. So reach out to that if you it, reach out to me if you want to do that. All you have to do is head over to my website here at brandhamill.com. The link's down in the description below. Rip down, just smash this button here and just fill out the form on the next page. Uh, it's a fairly big form, but I've worked with people in so many different countries, so uh, you know there's a reason for that. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Love to hear feedback, really do love to hear feedback. So if you've got any topics and stuff, drop a line in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.